Okay, so today I've got a lot to unpack because I didn't do my reading on Saturday. I had a lot going on on Saturday. I was working um, the full day in the salon. So today I read Genesis 19 through 25. I know that's a lot. Normally it's like three chapters, but I had to do the whole six chapters. So it was an easy read because it was a lot going on. Okay. So I guess I'm going to break it down by chapter and try to summarize it because it's a lot of stuff going on <laughs> in here. Okay, so in chapter 19, um, two angels came to Lot's household in Sodom and they were going to just stay and sleep out by the city gate. But Lot like hurried up, ran out there, was like, no, 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 come back to my house. And they were like, no, we're going to sit out here and um, just we'll just stay here. Um, he was like, no, and because he, he like persisted so hard or so strongly, they were like, okay. So they came back to his house. But while they were in his house, the people of Sodom came to the door and was like, let us in, give us those two guys that came um, so that we can have sex with them. It was like, all the men, there was no women, it was all the men. <laughs> so they were like, oh, no, send them out. We want to have sex with them. And Lot was like, no, I have daughters in here. I'll give you my daughters. They've never been touched. They've never slept with a man. I'll give you my daughters. Just leave the guys alone. Mind you, these are angels. So they were like, no, either you're going to send us out the angels or we're going to do something worse to you than what we got planned for them. So um, the angels basically pulled Lot back in the house and they did something that caused everybody that was standing outside of the door to be blind. Um, and the next day, the angels were like, hey, take your family and the, the, the guys that were uh, set to marry your daughters and go to another land because we're about to destroy the city. And he was like, okay. So he went and told everybody, the, son, the guys that were supposed to marry his two daughters didn't believe him. So they were like, no, you tripping. Um, that don't even sound right. So they didn't go. But him, his wife, and his two daughters went. And the angels told them, go, don't look back, don't touch, don't take anything else, don't talk to anybody, just go um, to the land and, um, you know, you'll be safe. Well, Lot and the daughters did that, but the wife looked back. And when she looked back, that's, you know, the story of the wife turning into a pillar of salt. And then, um, that was most of chapter 19 but the daughters because they were in this place with just their father were like okay there are no men here there are nobody you know no guys here for us to marry how are we gonna preserve our family line <laughs> so they went and decided to get their father drunk and they said okay we're gonna get him drunk and then we're gonna sleep with him get pregnant so that we can preserve our family nasty so the first daughter, the oldest daughter, did it first, the first night. She got him drunk, went in there, had sex with him. He didn't know what happened. I don't know what kind of wine they drinking, but <laughs> he didn't know what happened. Then the next night, they did it all over again, but it was the youngest daughter that did it this time. And same, he was so drunk, he didn't know what happened. Like, I'm not understanding how from one night to the next, he didn't understand, but whatever. So, they got pregnant, and... Um, their, their children or their offspring are, one was the Moabites and one was the Ammonites. That's where those tribes or people or whatever came from. It's nasty to me, but all right. So then chapter 20, um, Abraham did explain that, like he explained why he was trying to trick King Abimelech, um, by telling him that. Sarah was his sister, which in fact she was his sister. I didn't realize that, but she was his sister from his father, not his mother, even though that's still sisters, that's still blood relations, which is gross. But um, Abraham and Sarah were siblings by the father, but they were not siblings by the mother. So um, they weren't raised together. So uh, I guess at some point in their life, they came back together uh, and, and got married and yeah, that's where all of that came from. <laughs> but he tried to trick Abimelech and God was going to kill Abimelech and his family. And um, he cursed his family 
and his whole household because he had took Sarah thinking that it was Abraham's sister and you know he was going to have sex with her whatever but um after the conversation and Abraham and Abimelech talked it out and Abraham prayed on his behalf to God to let him know hey it was my fault I told him this and um you know stay your hand on him and his family so then because of the prayer that's when God re reversed the curse on his household so the women were unable to conceive before that and then once he prayed their wounds were opened up and they were able to have children his wife and all his maid servants and everybody were able to have children so um, that was chapter 20 chapter 21 was when Isaac was born um, and when Abraham had sent Hagar away um, but even in him sending her away God appeared to her and oh so she I feel like he was older when they left so I'm not sure how this even played out but when she went when she went out to the desert they had ran out of water and food whatever they had filled up her sacks with and she had put her son out I guess because he was dehydrated or something I don't know but he was set to die because it didn't have any more water and she just went over and decided she didn't want to watch it happen but then um, God came to her and was like don't cry um, I promised that I would make your son ruler of nations so um, you know he made a, a, a will or stream or something where she was able to get him water and drink and, and then move him to um, another city or country so that he could walk out whatever the bless the blessing or the promise was for um, him and his family even though it wasn't always it wasn't gonna be good because uh, remember Ishmael was said that his family all his lineage his descendants were gonna be at odds with the rest of his family and um, that's basically what actually ended up playing out but that's not until like chapter 25 so chapter 22 was when Abraham tested I mean God tested Abraham with Isaac and told him to take Isaac and sacrifice him and Abraham had asked him questions I don't know what he told Sarah because he took Abraham he took Isaac he took wood took you know stuff to make the fire um and he took some servants and he told the servants to go sit over in the cut and he was going over there and they were going to make the sacrifice and come back well when he got over there Isaac was like well where's the lamb you know you got all this stuff I don't see no animal for you to sacrifice and Abraham was like oh God's going to provide the lamb but in fact he had bound up Isaac and put him on the wood and was about to strike the match <laughs> so that he could uh, sacrifice him but God was like hey, hey don't you know don't sacrifice him um because you have did what I asked you to do without questioning me, without, you know, hesitation. I'm going to bless you. And he reminded him of the covenant um, that Isaac would be uh, the ruler of many nations. And he would have descendants that were countless, like more than he would be able to um, count. And um, he blessed him. And that was most of chapter 22 then 23 is where Sarah died and then Abraham Abraham had to ask to buy um, land and a cave to bury her in and the negotiation process to get that done and um, his people telling him oh but we know you we can give it to you and he was like no I'm gonna pay for it so that it's deeded to me but and they just went back and forth and back and forth until eventually he did pay for it it was deeded to him and it was also passed down to his family so then chapter 24 was about Isaac um, being blessed with Rebecca and that was when Abraham uh, told his servant to swear that he would go and he would never take his son to the land of Canaan, um, the land of Canaan to get a wife that he would take him back to his his family land and um, get a wife for him from his family, his kin, um, because the Canaan Canaanites, I guess, were cursed. So he was like, okay, 
But he said, swear to me, swear you never do it. So then he was like, okay, well, what if the girl will come back with me? He was like, no, the angel's going to go before you and tell the people um, what is supposed to happen so that when you get there, you won't have no problems. So the servant went and was like, um, he stopped outside of the city, kneeled down, prayed, and was like, okay, God, I just need you. Um, the first woman that comes out and I ask her to give me uh, a cup of drink and then after I, after she gives me drink she um, offers to give my camel's drink then um, that would be the woman that I'm supposed to take back to Isaac for him to take as a bride but before he could even finish praying like Rebecca had came out and he asked her for some water she gave it to him and she was like I'll give you camel something to drink until you know y'all are satisfied basically and then he went back with her to her family well actually before he went back with her to her family her brothers came out to find out who the person was that gave her the little nose thing the little ring that they put in their nose and then the bracelets um, which was a symbol i guess that she was supposed to be um, taken or spoken for um and told him to come back to the family because they prepared a place for him because he was the Lord's uh, servant, whatever. And, you know, they went through all of the rituals of, you know, supper, whatever. And then uh, Re Rebecca agreed to go back with him and she went back to him and, and back to Abraham and them. And then her and Isaac, I mean, her and, yeah, her and Isaac got married. Um, I think that's the it. That's it for um, yeah. That's it for chapter twenty four. Then chapter twenty five was when Abraham died and left everything. Isaac and Ishmael. Um, it, it talked about the tribes that Ishmael um, had as his descendants. He had twelve tribes um, underneath him and. Um, but Isaac only had two sons, and it talked about his two sons, Jacob and Esau, and how um, the older son would serve the younger son, but then it played out the whole um, thing about Jacob um, selling his birthright to his brother because he was hungry. He wanted something to eat. He came in the house, but he was a wild horse, so he was, you know, all over the place with it anyway, but... He came in, saw that Esau was cooking, and was like, oh, give me some of that, I'm hungry. Esau was like, nope, you can have some if you give me your birthright, you sell me your birthright. And he was like, mm, okay. He was like, nope, swear it, swear that you're gonna sell me your birthright. He was like, it's fine, I, what I'm gonna do with it anyway? So um, he sold him his birthright for some lentil soup. Like, lentil soup. <laughs> Uh, and it talked about how all of Ishmael's uh, sons were, or his family was in hostility or at odds with um, Isaac's family. Basically, like God had prophesied to them or told them before, before they even started having children. He talked about how they were going to be at odds and they were. And that's basically what... Um, all six chapters was about like it was really easy to read because it was a lot of scandal going on in here. I did not know that Abraham and Sarah actually were siblings. Um, I did not know that Lot's daughters had sex with him. That is gross. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty good passage. Um, I guess the only thing that I learned was that it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice because um, I don't know what would have happened had Abraham not obeyed um, God with offering Isaac up as a sacrifice. Like I don't know what what would have come from that. Like with his promise and with his uh, with the promise that God made to him about his descendants and his uh, lineage 
have been re, re uh, wrote or I don't know what would have happened if he didn't do that. And then if I do know that if he had not um, told the truth about Sarah, that Abimelech and his family would have died. Like, <laughs> just it's just better to be obedient than sacrifice. You know, than to make the sacrifice, and it's better to uh, be honest, and because you don't know who you are affected or impacted when um, you are scheming, lying, um, and trying to avoid what you're supposed to be doing. So, I guess that's what I got out of it. It's a really good story to read. I felt like I was reading a book, like an actual book. Um, I'm looking forward to what. This next week is um, about. But that's it for today. I wish I came with you guys. Bye.